Hey everybody, welcome to Buratech. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the website that I built in just three hours and why it took such a long time. All right, welcome back. So before we start the video, I want to make sure that you like and subscribe. And if you really like this video, please share it. Also, please check out the products down below. Remember, this channel doesn't do a Patreon. Instead, we sell digital products. And every dollar that we get from the products down below goes into making more content. All right, so like I said, I made a website in three hours. And just three hours, but it probably took me a little bit longer, and I'm gonna explain all the pitfalls that I experienced along the way. Now, one thing to remember is that I am an experienced developer. In fact, I started coding way back in 1997. That was a very long time ago, and since then, things have changed. In fact, you have to be so cognizant of changes in the industry that even things that I was doing three years ago are sometimes obsolete. The best example of this is Swift UI. I've been designing Apple apps for a long time, and in this recent edition of Xcode, they've gone away with the storyboard format and replaced it with Swift UI. And I remember going into Xcode and saying, oh, I can build an app in a very short amount of time, and then all of a sudden Swift UI was there and I had to relearn everything. So as a developer, you always have to relearn new things because the technology constantly changes. That's why this simple website, which you can see here, took such a long time. It took me about three hours to build from start to scratch. And if you look at it, it's insanely simple. And I'm gonna talk about why I made it so simple and again, why it took such a long time. So let's talk about why I made it so simple. Now I've been developing websites for a very long time and I've built tons of websites in my day. Now, over the years, there have been more and more frameworks being added to web development. There's been different kinds of website builders that you can use. And I said, you know what? It's not worth it. I actually went through several iterations of my personal website before this simple website and it was too complicated. Something was either too complicated to do or it would take such a long time and you know what? I looked at a few other websites that were really simple and I said, why don't I build a simple website? A website is just a place where people can go learn about you and maybe get into contact with you. That is pretty much it. If you're a photographer, maybe you have a portfolio, but you know what? I just wanted something simple and I love minimalism, so this really speaks to me. There's another thing about web development today. There are lots of frameworks that you can use and lots of different plugins, and you can even use WordPress templates, etc. Now, if you're building a really robust website with checkouts and a lot of other functionality is needed, then you have to go down this road. However, if you're making something simple, why complicate it? So I built this purely with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I didn't use anything else, and I built it completely from scratch. Now, like I said, I've been coding for a long time, but I haven't coded in web development in a fairly long time, meaning that some of my knowledge was obsolete. So this particular website uses CSS grids, which is a fairly new addition to the web development ecosystem. Now, part of the reason why this took three hours to make is that I had to update my knowledge into learning how CSS grids work. Now, Sometimes it might take people three hours just to learn how CSS grids work, but over the years, I have found really good ways to learn things quickly. In fact, that's what my training website, Mammoth Interactive, does. It gets people to learn things as quickly as possible. So I know how to learn things as quickly as possible, and since I was a freelancer in the past, I know that whenever you spend too long doing something, you're actually losing money. I've never lost that mentality. Now I wanted it to be simple and over the years I know how to get a great product out there and the way to do that is rapid prototyping. That is building as many prototypes and as many different iterations as possible to see which one is the best iteration. Now I could spend three months on this website and do iteration after iteration because I know that's how you get a really good product but this I wanted to see if I could do it in two or three hours. In fact I tried to do it in two hours and it didn't quite work. So this also touches on something else that is really important when you get good at something. It's possible to be too good at something. And this is something that a lot of people don't understand and it sounds fairly counterintuitive. So let's take a look at a real world example. Let's say you're a really good web developer and you want to get a job at a web development company. Now the web development company only needs a certain standard and a certain paycheck, but you are clearly above both of those. Now you might think that the web development company might just hire you because you're way better than the other candidates, but oftentimes, especially in business and especially in this scenario, if there's a certain price point and a certain expectation plus a bunch of other options, they might not hire you because you are too good. This happens way more often than people expect and it's a good example of how you can be too good or too qualified for a specific role. 
So in this particular example, I know again how to get a good website out there and I could spend hours and days or weeks on just something simple like this because I know that iterations make a better website. But I wanted to do it as quickly as possible and I had to kind of take myself out of my experience and think about this problem from a more beginner's point of view. So what I had to do was get something out there that a beginner would get out there because a beginner wouldn't have all the experience that I had. Now, another reason that this took so long is that, again, I haven't done web development for a while. If I was fresh off a web development contract or a freelancing gig, or I've been doing it day in and day out, this would have taken much less time. Because I haven't done web development in such a long time, I had to metaphorically dust off the web development book in my brain, which means that I had to kind of open it up and kind of refresh my memory on how all this works. Because as a developer, I work on game development engines, I work on web development projects, I work on app development projects, I work on machine learning projects, I work on a ton ton of different projects and sometimes I forget some of the information that I learned in the past. This is fairly normal. If you've ever learned a language that's a real spoken language and you don't use it every day and you forget, it's the same kind of scenario. So back to the website, I wanted to pick a very simple design and let's just talk a little bit about the design here. So I wanted to have a few different options with a few different text options on there. So I wanted to have my name, of course, plus the contact information and things that I'm currently doing. Now, all of this can be done and seen very clearly within this particular website. It's very easy, it's very simple, and you know what the best part is? It actually takes a very small time to load. This isn't really that big of a problem, but it used to be a big problem, and you know what? Sometimes a fast loading website is a good thing. So the other thing that I did was pick a simple font. So I watched this video on typography, which you should totally go check out. And this video made a really good example on how you can use simple fonts effectively. And I was so impressed with it that I decided to just use it in my website. The font in this website is just Helvetica and I use different font weights, which is either bold or thin or regular to accentuate the certain parts. For example, my name is in bold, the headings in bold, etc. Also, I use different sizes of the text to make sure that everything looked proportionally. I would say the biggest problem that I had with this particular project, again, was the CSS grid because I wasn't so familiar using it. In fact, I made the CSS grid using this website, which you can see here, and it basically made the framework that I needed. I had to go through three or four different prototypes to make it work, but it eventually worked. Lastly, the hardest thing about development today is to get things to work on different size devices. So some people are going to be viewing this on their iPad, some people are going to be viewing this on their computer, maybe some people are viewing it on a console, and some people are viewing it on a very obsolete phone. So today you have to account for those different types of devices with queries in CSS. So as you can see, I built a website in three hours. It took a little bit longer than I expected it to, but at the end of the day, I have a nice, clean, minimalist website that people can enjoy. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to buy the products down below because this channel does not do a Patreon. Every dollar that we get from the products that you buy below goes into making more content. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in another video.